Hello, I've heard a lot of confusion during the diagnosis of mosaic perfusion. So my presentation today to make eye to eye with everyone about that matter. The learning objective from this presentation is to be familiar with HRCT features of ground glass opacity, mosaic perfusion, or air trapping, and how to differentiate between them and what is the list of differential diagnosis for each one, and then take home message. As we see here, the normal HRCT should be symmetrical, homogeneous lung break, as we see in both sides and in each loops of lung. Comparing with this abnormal lung, which is showing areas of low attenuations, black area, and areas of high attenuations, white area, in these features. And the question now, is that area of white attenuations or high attenuations is the abnormal area, or that area of low attenuation is the abnormal area? As we see here, the abnormal area here is the black one, low attenuation area, and the white one is the normal lung. Comparing with this abnormal white area, high attenuation area, and this abnormal white areas subpleural consolidation. We'll explain that in next slides in details. And that is my aim from this presentation. Mosaic perfusion is a patchy area of decreased lung attenuations, meaning black area. The most important finding to establish the diagnosis of mosaic perfusion is the reduction in size of the vessels in the regions of the low attenuations, as we'll see in the next slides in practice. The mosaic perfusion most often results from airway disease. However, it can also be seen in vascular disease like chronic embolism. And this area of alternative uh, uh, white and black uh, areas in the lung representing abnormal lung breaking. White area representing high attenuation area, black area representing low attenuation area. And uh, the dilemma now is, is that area is the abnormal area or that area is the abnormal area? Uh, the, uh, that area is normal due to equal size of the blood vessel comparing to the blood vessel in the uh, white area. So we consider the high attenuation, the white area is the abnormal area. The abnormal area here is the ground glass opacity, comparing with this also abnormal area ground glass opacity due to consolidation. Uh, this is clear as abnormal. However, this one is uh, a part from the uh, main uh, aim from that presentation to differentiate it from the mosaic attenuations in the next slide. So, what is the ground glass opacity? Is a hazy increase attenuation, meaning white, of lung, but with preservations of bronchial and the vascular margin to compare it from the consolidations, which is obscuring the vascular margin. In patient with ground glass opacity, vessels usually appear equal in size through the lung. And the causes of ground glass opacity, partial filling of air spaces, interstitial thickening, or partial collapse of alveoli. The patient have abnormal homogeneity of the lung. There are areas of high attenuations and areas of low attenuations. First question, is that area is the abnormal area or that area is the abnormal area? Look for the blood vessel in each area. If it is equal in size, it representing abnormal high attenuation areas so that is diagnosed as a ground glass opacity. And this was a patient for positive for SARS and they have multifocal ground glass opacity as we've seen in the lab. We have uh, HRCT and there are area of low attenuation and also areas of high attenuation. And the question, is that area of low attenuation is abnormal or that area of high attenuation is abnormal. Looking at 
the blood vessel within both areas. The blood vessel here is large and more than in number and the size comparing with the blood vessels in the low attenuation area. So the diagnosis is the abnormal low attenuation area, which is meaning mosaic perfusion. So that patient is mo have mosaic perfusions and the normal high attenuation areas. In patient female, 45 with pulmonary arterial hypertension. Another case of alternative areas of abnormality within the lung parenchyma, areas of high attenuation and the areas of low attenuation. If we look into the blood vessel, we can see the blood vessels in the low attenuation area. So the abnormality here is a ground glass opacity in the high attenuation area in that patient of positive COVID-19. So the diagnosis here is ground glass opacity, not mosaic perfusion. Another example for ground glass opacity, which is showing normal blood vessel size and amount in the low attenuation area. So we consider the high attenuation area is a ground glass opacity. There are no mosaic perfusion. And that another patient of MERS with multifocal areas of ground glass opacity in subpleural distributions, and there are also lower loop consolidation. We can differentiate consolidation from ground glass opacity by obscuring the blood vessels through the high attenuation opacity area. Comparing with these blood vessels, which I can discriminate it through the opacity. So that is ground glass opacity and that is consolidations. Both are high attenuation comparing by normal low attenuation line. Airway disease, not vascular disease. What is the list of differential diagnoses for airway disease, mosaic perfusion and air traveling, hypersensitivity in pneumonitis, asthma due to filling of the bronchioles with secretions, constrictive bronchiolitis, bronchiectasis, cystic fibrosis. However, if there are no air trapping in expiratory film and there are mosaic perfusion abnormality in the low attenuation area, so consider the diagnosis is vascular disease due to thromboembolic disease, pulmonary hypertension, or vascular obstruction. As we see in that patient with abnormal consolidation because there are obscuring of the blood vessel and there are air bronchogram, and there are also abnormal high attenuation area and the low attenuation area through over both lung fields. So the first question is, is that area is abnormal or the low attenuation area is abnormal? We are looking at the blood vessel. If the blood vessels are equal as that patient, so the ground glass opacity is considered in that patient with negative COVID-19 pneumonia. There are consolidation and the ground glass opacity. A little bit more cases. We have multifocal areas of high attenuations uh, noted in subpleural distribution, representing the ground glass opacity in the patient of positive COVID-19, and the areas of low attenuations showing blood vessels which equal or a little bit more than in size and the number comparing with that high attenuation area. So the diagnosis is ground glass opacity, not mosaic attenuation. Actually, there is no doubt that every radiologist try to reach final diagnosis from each study. Let me help through that slide. We have in that slide three different diagnoses and all have alternative areas of low attenuation and high attenuations, low attenuation and high attenuation, low attenuation and high attenuations area. So the first question is going to the regions of the low attenuations and compare the blood vessel 
in that area with a blood vessel in the high attenuation area. If it is scanty and decrease in size and number, it is considered as a mosaic attenuation, like this mosaic picture. And that patient also have low area with scanty blood vessels comparing with the blood vessels in the high attenuation area. So we consider that area is normal lung and that area representing mosaic attenuation. Mosaic attenuation or mosaic perfusions representing maybe due to airway disease or vascular disease as that patient of chronic pulmonary embolism. That patient was constricted bronchioles. However, the high attenuation area here, comparing with low attenuation area, showing high blood vessel or equal blood vessel size between the high and the low attenuation area. So we consider the low attenuation area is normal. That area is representing the ground glass opacity in that patient of pulmonary hemorrhage, like this ground glass. Now, how can differentiate between airway disease and the vascular disease? We know that now there are, uh, there are uh, uh, areas of mosaic perfusion. We are going to do expiratory film. We'll show the areas of low attenuations increasing in size and appearing more black in the expirations due to obstructions of airway. And so we can diagnose uh, if we find the expiratory film air trapping like this, we can diagnose the patient as airway disease, not vascular disease. So I want to introduce my summary and conclusion helping to reach the final diagnosis, or at least shrinking the list of differential diagnosis. If we have lung parenchyma with alternative areas of high and low attenuation, we look at the blood vessels in the low attenuation area. If the blood vessels are reduced in number and size, comparing with the normal lung or with the other uh, high attenuation area, we consider it diagnosed as a mosaic perfusion. However, if the blood vessels in the low attenuation area are equal to the blood vessel in the high attenuation area, we consider it as a ground glass diagnosis. Now, we're going to expiratory film to differentiate the mosaic perfusions of airway disease from the mosaic perfusions from vascular disease. If the air trapping present in the expiratory film is representing mosaic perfusion due to airway disease like hypersensitivity pneumonitis, asthma, constrictive bronchiolitis, bronchiectasis, or cystic fibrosis. However, if there are no air trapping in expiratory film in mosaic attenuation, or mosaic perfusion diagnosed, the differential diagnosis is chronic pulmonary embolism, pulmonary hypertension, or vascular obstruction. However, if the abnormal area, we consider it is a high attenuation area due to equal blood vessel size between the high and the low attenuation area, that diagnosed as a ground glass opacity. Unfortunately, we have a lot of differential diagnosis for the ground glass opacity like these different patients of ground glass obesity diagnosed as a pneumocystic prion pneumonia, non-specific interstitial pneumonia, extrinsic allergic alveolitis, cytomegalovirus, COVID-19, MERS, SARS, bronchoalveolar cell carcinoma, pulmonary alveolar proteinosis, cryptogenic organizing pneumonia, discommative interstitial pneumonia. We have a lot of differential diagnosis if we diagnose the case as a ground glass obesity. According to the patient clinical data, according to the concomitant finding on the film, we can choose one uh, suitable diagnosis. And these are my references. If you feel that presentation was benefit, don't forget to support me by subscribing and I welcome any comments or suggestions.